Hello everyone, I'm Brenda Mallory and it's good to be with you today. Thank you Pastor Tim and Sister Melissa for this opportunity. Today I'm suggesting we take off the mask, the emotional mask, the mask that we hide behind because of fear. For example, if we are insecure, we might hide behind the mask of name dropping. If we are unsure of our power, we hide behind the mask of being a bully. If we don't think the world loves us, we can hide behind a mask of anger. We mask the debt we've built up to pay for lifestyles we can't afford. We pretend things are fine at work when our jobs are really on the line. We pretend things are okay in our marriages when there is distance. But what about the mask fake people wear? They are afraid to be real because they fear they won't be accepted. The reason is we're afraid of what people will think when it's just me. But being just you is actually the best and most perfect thing you could ever be. What if the mask you wear is your issue? The Bible is full of people who had no name, but were known by their issue. We know the blind man and the beggar and the woman with the issue of blood. Their visible identity was their issue. In John 5, 1 through 9, we find a very important story known as the lame man sitting by the pool. And the setting is this. There was a spring in Jerusalem called Bethesda, and people with issues would gather on the five porches. And the Bible says there was a great multitude of sick people there. They congregated according to their issue. We tend to hang out with people who think like us and who believe and understand us. And so it was at the pool of Bethesda. The pool was fed by a spring that occasionally would bubble up more water than normal and the pool would overflow. An angel apparently did this once a year to offer hope because when this happened, a single person would be healed of that issue. The scripture tells of a man who was there 38 years. Every day his parents would bring him there with the hope that he would be the one, but year after year he wasn't the one and it was always someone else. Every day someone would bring him and roll out the mat and put him on it. And on that mat, he was identified to us as the man with the issue, the man who was nameless. Nameless, they were not truly known because they hid or were covered up by their issue. This kind of mask is not only visible to others, but sometimes people around us don't even know our issue, but we do. We've been abused and no one knows why we're so angry all the time, but it's an issue. Maybe there's been a betrayal of trust and we can't get past it. Jesus comes along and he isn't very modern in his approach to the lame man. In fact, in our day, he would be considered to be without compassion. But he sees him on his mat and he sees his obvious issue, one that has defined him for 38 years. But Jesus doesn't state the obvious by talking about his issue. Jesus doesn't sit down with him on his mat and say, now why are you here? What happened to you? Jesus was direct. He got straight to the point and said, do you want to be made well? You have to understand what a shocking statement that was. For 38 years, this was his identity. By now, everything in his life was built around that issue. His friends were his friends somehow relating to that issue. He had helpers or people who provided something for him because of the issue. But Jesus doesn't refer to the issue. Instead, he says, do you want to be made well? Look at how the man responded. He should have said, yes, I want to be made well. That is the reason for this pool and all these hurting people being here, but he doesn't. Instead, he says, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. You know what he's saying. It's not my fault. I believe Jesus was not ignoring the fact that this man was a victim of some cruel circumstance, but he was trying to let this man know victim is meant to be a temporary word, not a permanent condition. The devil will tell you once a victim, always a victim, but that's not true. So many people are hung up on what someone did to us, but what we should be thinking about is what Jesus did for us. The day I begin to talk more about what Jesus did for me than what the abusers did to me is the day I get off the mat. It's the day I take off the mask. It's the day I am identified by my name and not by my issue. 
When all we talk about is what has happened to us, there's no room to talk about what Jesus has done for us. Are you tired of letting this issue identify you? Are you through with this issue dominating your whole life? There is no issue worth allowing it to totally own your entire life. Maybe a while, but at some point it's got to end. Jesus didn't accommodate him. He challenged him. Do you want to put this issue in your past? Isn't 38 years long enough? Are you ready for a whole new identity? The best thing you can do to your group of friends is to challenge them. Do you want to be healed? There is a limit to how much you should talk about your hurts. There's a limit to how much you should dwell in your past. Jesus didn't rehash with the lame man. What happened to you? Who let you down? He didn't engage in yet another dead-end conversation of the unfair past. The best thing you can do to your friends is not enable them in their dilemma, but to challenge them to be healed. The abuse can become more powerful than the abuser, and the hurt person can heal to the point they lead worthwhile causes. The lame man had blame and excuses. Someone always beats me to the pool. It's not fair. Jesus ignores that. He doesn't wallow with him. It may sound cold or uncaring, but let's judge by what happened. Jesus didn't enable and have a pity party with him. Instead, he challenged him to abandon that issue. Take up your bed and walk, he said. You don't throw out the truth because of love. That's not love. Love is not always sitting on the mat with you. And love is not always allowing you to stay behind that mask. Sympathy is not the same as empathy. It's not even the same as compassion. True compassion loves someone so much that they refuse to leave you in your issue. Jesus told the man to get up, take your mat, and walk away from that issue that has identified you for so long. I ask you, do you want to be healed? Because it is possible. There are people on the other side of your obedience waiting for you to get up. The devil wants you on the mat, hiding behind that mask, not just for you, but for those coming after you. How many people could you help if you could get off the mat? There's a multitude around you and after you, praying you get off the mat. And there's a spirit that is telling our generation today to stay on the mat and to hide behind that mask, telling you to Instagram your mask and use different angles and different filters and pimp out your mask to be the hero instead of focus on your savior that's encouraging you to get off the mat. You have to change your posture. Your whole perspective of God is you laying on your back on the mat, hiding behind your mask. The Bible says that after this, the man met Jesus in the temple. Jesus challenged the man at the pool because he had an appointment with him at the temple later. There are places you can't go until you get rid of that mask. And Jesus isn't looking for issues. He's looking for his children. You have a destiny just beyond that mask. Friends, we need you just the way you are. With all the shyness, the brokenness, the shame, the hurts, the scars, but without the mask. We need you whole and full of God's purpose. And your scars are beautiful.